is Rick Pasek, Flyfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we're going to tie a little damsel pattern. Um, it's really similar to my uh, my CDC damsel that if you go back in the video history, I'll put a, try to put a link in the in the bottom. Um, but it's pretty well the same fly, kind of. It's got a little bit of a bigger collar and it's got uh, a different, it's got a rib in it, which the other one doesn't. It's all CDC, the other one. So uh, let's not play around. Let's get it going. Deadly, deadly pattern, especially this time of year when the damsels are starting to move and hatch and well starting to they're already pretty prolific out there so um in the vice i will start off with i tie i i fish almost all my damsel flies in the top eight to ten inches of water um, i don't uh, usually fish them any deeper than that um, just because that's how they migrate so i'm going to be using a dry fly hook today it's a Hens BL321 in a size 12, so it's a fairly light hook. And I'm using some Semperfly Nano Silk in olive for the thread. Going to be using some Hens CDC, uh, code number 6, um, in olive for the tail, body, and collar. And then I'll be using some Stretch Floss, orange bright orange this is like a holo, uh, a uh, um, like a UV orange really really bright for the rib and a pair of uh, the original package I can't remember what brand these are but these are just a, a plastic um, eye and they're on a they're on a flat uh, plastic so they, they lock down quite nicely actually cut that off now while I'm ready just cleaning off the ends of the eyes, making sure they're good. All right, so let's start our thread. Let's uh, wax my thread. It's nano silk, any GSP, slippery. So get her started. I don't know when this video is going to go out, but today's Canada Day, so happy Canada Day to all uh, us Canadians and Happy 4th of July in a couple of days to my American neighbors. Like I said, I don't know when this is going to go out. I'm hoping to get it out for Sunday, so that'll be uh, the third, right? Yeah, today's the first. Yeah, third. <laughs> so, um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, I'm just going to start about there, and I'm going to leave a little bit of room. It's not actually quite enough. Come back a bit, about two eyes worth and I'm going to tie on my, tie in my eyes and when I meant eyes worth I meant hook eyes I went about two to three hook eyes back and then I'm going to four or five turns one way four or five turns another way and then I'm going to start kind of figurating underneath it and just kind of being a little on the random side it helps lock that down a bit better and I really like these ones not the I like making my own mono eyes but uh, um, just don't have the right materials here to do it but I like these ones because they're flat and they actually lock really well right they they just bring that down I think I want to just bring this just away just a tad and then refocus because my uh, there we go that's a bit better so yeah they're they got they're flat in the middle so they, they they sit on the hook a bit better so okay so now I'm going to take two little CDC feathers and I'm going to stack them on top of each other. And I'm going to kind of make sure they kind of line up, that they're, they're flaring the same way, not out, which doesn't really, really matter because once they get wet, they'll, they'll be uh, laying down anyway. So. The reason I like using CDC for this pattern is because, first of all, I don't want it to sink very far. And second of all, I uh, I like the little sheen that it gives off, right? So I just cut my CDC to length and I put it in right behind the eyes there. And then just tie that down all the way back to about where the barb would be. Don't go around the corner because you want this sticking straight out, not facing down. Okay. So there's my my little tail. Now again, it's not 
doesn't look perfect, but once that gets wet and stuff, that'll that'll go down into a nice skinny little tail, right? So, okay, next step, I'm gonna add my stretch floss in, come forward. I'm gonna try to keep this body symmetrical, thin, but symmetrical. Oops. Five, six good turns, and then I'm just gonna really stretch, stretch, stretch that stretch floss so it doesn't build up the body too much. it in my material clip to keep it out of the way so I didn't build up the body very much because it, I stretched it so much right just gonna make sure this front is tied in okay now <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get two feathers lar slight larger ones so they're quite a bit larger and I'm gonna stack them on top of each other And then I'm going to make sure I stroke all this material back so it's sticking out. I'm going to take my material clip and get in there and hold it nice and tight. Okay, take my larger scissors and I'm going to cut right along the stem, just leaving little tips. Okay, I'm going to do a dubbing loop could do it in a split thread as well if I wanted. Come back forward. Now I don't know if this is going to be enough to do the whole body. Sometimes I'll have to do it twice, which is fine. Put my dubbing spinner in. I'm sorry. Wax my thread. CDC so can be slippery. because I don't want too thick of a body. Give that a good spin. I'll let her go. Spin. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my little dubbing brush here and just brush some of this out. Okay. Oh, now. Just get it started and then come forward. I don't want to to be too thick, right? So just really, this might actually make it all the way. Good. Good. Right on. That's what I want. I want it to come right behind those eyes there. And then that off. Cut that off. And I'm going to take my fingers and try my best to slick all that back. Get it behind there. There we go. Now I'm going to take my orange floss and counter wrap, trying to wrap through that body material. Brush it if you have to to untrap it. Come right behind that eye, and then in front of the eye, in front of the eyes. Just to help tie that off. And I give this a really good stretch. Go in front a bunch of times, stretch it. And you gotta see how much I'm stretching because I'm bending the hook. Like I'm bending it up forward. I'm not getting in there. There we go. Again, slick a hair everything back. So there's my body completed. Now all I want to do is do a, a front hackle for the to represent legs. So again, CDC. Gonna use two feathers again, the same feathers actually that I used just a minute ago. Um, just the other side of it. So other side. Okay, get those legs to get the, some semblance of legs in here, right? So let's just see, make sure that that comes out a bit. That's not cooperating. Sir, being a little bugger 
feathers. Sometimes CDC, they've got a, a curve to the feather, so you gotta find the, oh, another one that's got a curve. So when you go and put it in your material clip, it's just easier to, to grab all the materials. So there, I got them hopefully lined up, we'll find out. Sometimes it can be fun, all part of it. And I like doing it on camera like this. I don't like having, like, I do pre-prepare some stuff, but I like doing it on camera so you guys can see that sometimes things do go a little wonky, right? So you need to be ready. So just a little bit of material in there. Do a dubbing loop in front here front of the eyes. I'll go back up over the eye just to lock it. Wax it. And dubbing spinner. Put in my CDC. Pinch, spin, let go pinch. And it gives these nice longer long legs. So now what I'm going to do is figure eight through the eyes here. I'm just going to put this up behind, over top, over top, top, come back into the front, lock it down, cut it off, cut off your dubbing loop, your finisher. Get a whip finish. Now if you're just gonna tie one, this is how I would do it. When I tie a bunch, what I'll do is I'll tie on the eyes and then I'll put a drop of head cement or a drop of, uh, of Sally Hansen's whatever on the eyes go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one, and then I'll come back. If I'm tying like a dozen, right, I'll do that. Let those eyes glue in there and dry. So, alrighty, so there is that damsel. To see the little orange, uh, uh, orange ribbed uh, CDC damsel. This thing, when it gets wet, it'll slick back nicely. Those legs will kind of pulsate out because they've got them in front of the eyes like that. They'll, they'll pulsate, right, looking a little bit like legs. Um, and then that uh, that tail will move really nicely, like the like the little paddles on the back of a damsel, how they how they move. Um, and then that little orange will stick out. And orange and, and green, we all know the pumpkin head, or most of us do at least, um, is a, such a successful pattern. And it's just it's that orange green, right? So, um, and this is uh, just a little damsel version of that. So there's one um, here. I'll show you another one I did. A few minutes prior to this, just to, as a, I always do a practice one before, just so I, I'm uh, prepared. So but there's my the other one I did prior to this. All right, really buggy looking, right? Like I said, when this gets wet, it, it'll slick down a bit, but it'll because I because I did that that uh, those uh, uh, the CDC legs from in front, those eyes will help kind of keep that out and help help them pulsate, right? So, alrighty. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, little damsels to fish. Um, do do really well with them. That that orange uh, really pops and really gets them intrigued. So, uh, yeah. Um, I use a, uh, a floating line or a sink tip, but I've got a Airflow uh, three foot type one sink tip. So it's a really short little sink tip. Um, and I'll cast. I'll try if I can. I'll park myself close to the weeds and I'll cast away from the weeds and strip slowly towards. Um, I'll also park away from the weeds and cast right into them, like the reeds and stuff at short. Because um, damsels, for those that don't know, damsels, when they migrate, they come from the substrate, from the bottom, uh, wherever they happen to be, uh, and they swim straight up the water column. And then once they get to about the, the top foot, then they'll start migrating towards shore. 
you'll see quite often you'll see damsel nymphs just swimming like almost they almost look like a little leechy thing swimming and it's almost always towards shore towards reeds towards uh, sticks logs anything that's sticking out of the water even your anchor rope and then they'll get to that they'll climb out they'll rest do their thing split open transform and then the uh, the adults uh, a little blue normally blue not always some brown ones are females and and uh, but then, I mean there's other subspecies as well um, that but that's how they act right so they, they come up and over not like dragonflies. Dragonflies will crawl all the way across the bottom to shore and then up. These guys leave themselves pretty vulnerable. I, I don't know what their evolutionary uh, reasoning is behind it, but they leave themselves pretty vulnerable because they, they're, they're right in the middle of the water, right? So, um, but yeah, so fish these on a floating line, uh, no weight to them. I, that's why it's nice CD seal help them float. Those eyes don't, won't give it much... Uh, I don't use bead chain eyes, I use these plastic ones because I don't want the weight. Um, and then I do a really slow figure eight retrieve with the odd little pop pop. And a figure eight retrieve and a pop pop, right? Then let it sit. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the fish can go quite crazy on these. So. Alrighty, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've uh, subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. And uh, I think in the next week or two here, we'll be doing a couple of random giveaways. I got a, another uh, one of the Osprey Fly Fishers Fly Box books to give away. And I've got the uh, Airflow Euro Nymph line, uh, fly line to give away. So we'll be doing a few giveaways in the next little while here. Just uh, keep an eye out for them. And uh, yeah, when the videos come out, that I, and I'll, I'll mention when, when to make comments and stuff to, for the chance to win. But make comments on all my videos if you can, guys. So let me know what you want to see. Let me know if you guys do things differently. Uh, let me know how you guys would fish this. Um, that kind of stuff. Alrighty. Talons, everyone.